Hey everybody, what's going on? So we're back talking about a camera that I have been wanting to get my hands on for a number of months, but of course, because of scheduling, it was quite tough to get some hands-on time with it. I finally did. This is the Leica Q2 Monochrome. Now, big thanks to Leica Singapore for helping me with this. Having said that, these are my thoughts, my thoughts only. So I'm gonna talk about the Q2 Monochrome, how it compares to the M10 Monochrome, which we did a review on a number of months back. We'll put a link right here, but watch this video first. And just my overall thoughts about Leica in general and what, how many good things they're doing with this monochrome sensor and what the future may hold for a monochrome camera out there. Let's talk about it. So we did our initial impressions of the Q2, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago when it first came out. And these have the same, pretty much the same specs as the original Q2. Of course, the big difference is the sensor in this. And of course, the outside of it, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But the sensor is that same 47.3 megapixel full frame sensor, but there's no color layer to it. It's all black and white. So to talk about the Q2 monochrome, we got to talk about how the Q fits into Leica's ecosystem. And some say this is the camera that sort of saved Leica in a lot of ways because this is the camera for the broader audience. You know, it's, it has that rangefinder look to it. It has that classic look, but it's got one lens. It's fixed. It's got autofocus. It's easy to use. It's compact. It's lightweight. It, it looks fantastic. It takes really good images. Even from the original Q to the Q2, the images are really, really good. This is, I mean, when you come into the monochrome system, as I talked about this in my previous M10 monochrome review, you know, people thought that the monochrome would, who would buy this camera? Like it's just black and white. But a lot of people did. It was very popular. And even to this day, you know, secondhand monochrome cameras still hold their value really well. And the Q2 monochrome, which I'm glad Leica did this because this was a brilliant move in my personal opinion because the monochrome was such a fun camera to use for me personally that having an autofocus monochrome system is even better. It's gonna, uh, you know, it's going to attract a lot more buyers out there to the Leica community. Um, yes, there is a price difference and I'll talk about that in just a bit, but as a whole, this camera is really fun to use. Now, when you look at the Q2 monochrome versus the Q2, the really only difference you're gonna see is that it's completely blacked out. There is no yellow markings or orange markings or red markings. It's black, white, and gray. That is it. But now, this is not the fastest camera on the market, so if we wanna to compare it to other camera manufacturers out there, don't do it. Leica's not meant for speed. It's not. Leica is about the process of taking the photo, okay? That is why people buy a Leica. That's why they invest in the Leica system. Yes, there are other cameras out there that can take just as good as photos at a much lower price. We're not going there with that. If you're looking at Leica, you don't care about price. You care about the history, the lineage, the build quality, and what it's like to hold and use a Leica. And the Q2 Monochrome embodies all of that. I've been using it for the past 10 days, and uh, you know I've used the Qs and the Q2s previously, and I and it just I just enjoy the Monochrome system. Is this a camera that I can have as my only camera? No, because I do need color, <laughs> especially for the work I do. But this would be a fun camera to have as a secondary camera to go out and do street photography if I want to travel around. I just want to see the world in black and white because it is very different to see the world only in black and white versus color and converting it in black and white. And uh, if you enjoy that art of photography, that's what this camera brings you. You know, the shades, the shadows, the highlights, how to capture, how to find the contrast in it and how to make an image pop that in a color image, it might just look very blah, but in black and white, it can look a little bit different. Anyway, that's pretty much the Q2 in a nutshell. If you wanna look over some specs, yes, the ISO is better on it, 100 up to 100,000, but you're never gonna shoot 100,000. But I can say, as a, you know, comparison to the M10 and monochrome, it's really got good ISO performance. It's fantastic. If you wanna shoot a 20,000 ISO, you're not gonna have a problem. You wanna go higher, you can do it. Of course, you got a 1.7 lens on this, so you don't have to really shoot that high of ISO because it's a pretty fast lens, but it has that capability in it. Um, and that's the benefit of having a monochrome uh, sensor versus a color sensor is you've got much better low light performance. You can do up to 10 frames per second if you want to do some burst modes on this. You can do some video. It's kind of fun. Anyway, let's go to Lightroom. Let's take a look at images with the Q2 monochrome and we'll compare it to the M10 monochrome images that I took in the past. They're not going to be side by side. Don't get mad at me. This is just sort of a, just a general comparison. And I'll talk to you about my final thoughts about the camera after that.
All right, guys, we're now in Lightroom taking a look at images from the Q2 Monochrome. Now, I will do a little bit of a comparison. We'll just show you some samples from the M10 Monochrome towards the end of this. Because I did not have the M10 Monochrome with me, I could not do a side-by-side -side shot comparison, nor did I have the same focal length at the time of the review when I did review the M10 Monochrome. So it's not going to be a side-by-side -side comparison, just in case you were wondering, okay? But let's take a look at images from the Q2 Monochrome, because that's the camera we're here to talk about. Now, let's take a look at some motorcycle shots here. This is my motorcycle that it's in the shop right now. This is not dust, actually. This is the paint flakes in the, um, the tank. It actually has this gold flakes that are in there and it's just coming alive through this black and white. But again, look at the detail that this camera is able to capture with this lens. It's just phenomenal. I mean, love the tonalities with the grays, the blacks and the whites. And yeah, this has been edited slightly, but I mean, I can really, you know, bring on the highlights more, bring it up. And the image doesn't break apart. That's one thing that's really nice about these monochrome sensors. I think Leica's just done a tremendous job with this. And I think that the monochrome cameras that they have come out with over the years have been some of their best cameras. Now I know you can't have a black and white camera as your only camera. I mean, maybe you can, I couldn't personally, but as a secondary camera, as something that I wanna go street, do some street photography or documentary work, or just some you know really spontaneous shots, I think that this camera would be an amazing asset to have in your camera bag. Besides reviewing cameras, I actually host events and I was actually um, co-hosting the launch of Disney Plus here in Singapore. This was my co-host Nikki. She was getting ready, getting some makeup and hair done. And uh, so I decided to capture some images of her. And uh, yeah, I just love how the black and white captures people, you know, and the tonality and the face and, and you can play around with the highlights and shadows a little bit to just make it pop. It's really, really special. Here's another shot. She's getting her hair done. I just want to kind of capture this um, blurry motion with the hair kind of standing still here and then the blur here as he was running his hands uh, through her hair. Just it's something interesting, something different. I mean, you could do this in color as well, but in black and white, it obviously has a, a different feel together. Let me show you some behind the scenes shots. Now, what happened was while we were hosting this event, um, I actually gave my camera to my manager who and I just said, can you shoot some uh, behind the scenes photos of us? And she's never used a Q2 camera or any Leica camera for that matter. I set it in auto and I just said fire away, put it at 1.7 so she would get optimal, you know, shutter speeds for low light performance. And you know, it's really great what uh, how it turned out. I mean, I'm pretty, pretty impressed. I mean, she did a great job with this. I mean, we're just taking a number of shots here. And even if the shot's not 100% in focus, what's great is that it gives you that essence of film. So in a monochrome sensor, and I mean, I guess you could say in color, but in color, we're a little bit more, at least I am a little, little bit more critical when it comes to a color photograph. But in a black and white photograph, if there's a little bit of motion blur, if there's a little bit of camera shake, or you know, the shutter's a little bit too low, it looks like film to me. And it still has that romanticism to it that makes it look very, very unique. Um, here's just some random shots. There was Mickey Mouse there. Uh, there's, uh, she's trying to get this one shot of us right here. And uh, look at this. There's uh, me trying to, you know, just having fun with the fountain behind me. And then there's Nikki, uh, you know, just kind of gasping. We're just having some fun with this shot. But again, you can shoot this in color and it would be, yeah, that's nice. But in black and white, it really just pops. Now, let me show you some other images here of, of this gentleman. Now, this guy was kind enough to pose for me. I did ask for his permission to take a photo and he was really sweet. And he said, yeah, man, and sure. And I said, it's the black and white camera. He's like, really? They make those now? And I'm like, yeah. So he had some fun. I showed him the image afterwards and he had a blast. But uh, look at the detail here on his beard. I just want to show you this for a second. This monochrome sensor, and you've seen this even in the previous M camera monochrome sensors, it's, they're sharper they're sharper than the colored sensors. And obviously it could be because you're removing that color layer that it just makes it, you know, I don't know what it is exactly. I'm not an engineer. Someone with um, better knowledge about it than I, can, I have will explain it, but I can tell in the images. Look at this. You can see the, you know, the skin texture here, the beard, his eyes. Yeah, but it fades out to the bottom. It's okay, it's got, it just, there's natural, organic. Even this lady that was sitting on this marble um, pillar here for a second. I mean, it's a it could look like a boring shot to some, but when you have the shadows coming over here, kind of creeping over her, she's sitting there by herself. You know, that's the one thing about black and white. You're gonna capture things and you're gonna see things that you might not see necessarily in color. And that's what makes it really, really um, just beautiful and fun to shoot black and white with. Here's a couple of the building shots here. 
Uh, we were walking around uh, this uh, part of Singapore called Tiong Bahru. And again, look at the, the details in the clouds here. I mean, look at this. It just automatically changes the image completely. I mean, yes, you can do a lot of this with a color image. But with black and white, I do find the dynamic range is even a little bit more than color. And again, is it sharp? Yes, it is. Look at the, look at the texture on the buildings here. Absolutely beautiful. I'm telling you guys, this is a fantastic combo. Now, let me just show you a little bit of the um, M10 monochrome for a second here. And this is um, a Harley Davidson motorcycle that I saw. And I just thought, okay, you know, I shot this for my review uh, for the M10 monochrome previously. And one thing that I did notice between the M10 monochrome and the Q2 monochrome, and it just could be a variety of things. I don't know what it is, but I did notice there's a little bit more gray to them. So you can play with the images a little bit more than the Q2 slightly. I mean, we're splitting hairs here, folks, to be frank with you. I just noticed a little bit more into the gray tonalities than with the Q2, which had a little bit more of the more contrastier image. But yeah, I did find them to be very similar, but I think I would give the overall image quality a slight edge to the M10 monochrome, even though it has less megapixels. I think what Leica's done with that sensor is phenomenal, but between the two cameras, I like an EVF and I would go with the Q2 monochrome over the M10 monochrome. Um, and that's my personal choice. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Q2 monochrome. Let's go to my final thoughts on this review. So my final thoughts on the Q2 monochrome, as we saw in Lightroom, the images look great. The guy has great dynamic range, great ISO performance, and they just have this je ne sais quoi to them. I mean, it's just Leica, you know what I mean? And Leica does black and white really well. I mean, other cameras do black and white and they have those simulations and all that stuff, but just shooting with a pure black and white camera, there is a difference. Now, you might or might not notice it, I do, but it's the joy of shooting with this camera that's black and white only that makes it really fun to use. Now, we gotta talk about this because this is sort of an elephant in the room with the Q2 monochrome versus the Q2 and that is price. Now, this is a thousand US dollars more than the standard Q2. Now, we don't see this price difference in the M10 variant out there, but we do see it in the Q2 and I asked Leica for the reasoning behind it. They did not give me an official answer, so I wish the price was a little bit more even because it does dissuade people from getting into this monochrome system, which I think Leica does well. Leica does niche very well, right? And this is a niche camera for a lot of people out there. Most people will want to get a colored camera, they'll convert it to black and white later, but if you do have the extra means to afford a camera like this and you're willing to take that step into just the black and white world of photography, this camera will reward you. As I mentioned before, it's small, it's lightweight, it's compact, it's easy to use, it's quick enough for street photography, and you're gonna capture images that are really fun and unique and from a different perspective. Now, of course, there is the debate between 28 millimeters and 35 millimeters. Why did Leica continue with the 28 for the Q2? You know, there's a lot of discussion on that. I personally would prefer the 35 millimeter lens, but Leica wants sort of that in-between lens that can cover wide angle and a little bit more pseudo portrait, I guess you could say. I don't know. I've shot with the Q, the Q2, now the Q2 monochrome over a number of years, and this is just a fun system to use. And I recommend it. If you have the extra means, pick it up. You're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Q2 monochrome. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Would you invest in a black and white only camera? Or would you rather just get a color one and convert it later on? Love to hear from you. Anyway, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, be safe out there, and we'll chat to you soon. Take care.